Good afternoon and welcome. Good afternoon and welcome everyone to our midday uh, prayer session. And for those people who are new, welcome, ever welcome. So we have been doing a study of the Spirit of Prophecy book called Christ Object Lesson. And we have been blessed with our speaker, Sister Knox, who has been taking us methodically, and I mean methodically, through this book and blessing us by as she expounds the word of God and expounds this book. It is also making us question our walk with God and for us to go before him and pray for forgiveness, but also to ask for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in order for us to have a stronger walk with God. And so today, from what I can see, we are looking at the talents and it's, of course, going to be based on Matthew 25. At this time, I'm going to ask for Sister Mungabi to pray for us. And then the next voice after Sister Mungabi will be Sister Knox, who will be taking us through the study of this <laughs> um, chapter, Matthew 25. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our precious eternal Father in heaven, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, we just want to praise you, to thank you, to give glory and honor and majesty to you. Because you promise us in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. May your kingdom come at the moment and terminate any other kingdom. Because we say in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my faith, turn away from their wicked ways you hear in heaven and hear the land. Hear this group at the moment, anything which is not yours here, which does not fit in your kingdom. Because we want only the Holy Spirit to lead Sister Knox Luke 12, verse 12, it says, while you are standing there, the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. I pray for the gift of Holy Spirit and Sister Knox and all of us so that we understand uh, Matthew 25. We don't want to be at the left, we want to be at the right. In Jesus' name, I thank you. I praise you for your presence. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for prayer, Mom Gabe. Thank you, Sister Sharon. We come once more on this platform, as um, we have already said, Sister Sharon, we're looking at the parables of Jesus uh, using the little book, uh, Christ's Object Lessons. We are on part 30 today, and uh, we're looking at the parable of talents. The parable of talents. Can I ask one skillful reader to read uh, to read for us Matthew twenty five? Uh, it's quite a read. Um, more than fifteen verses, uh, verse thirteen uh, to to thirty. If there will be a need to stop uh, before thirty, I will I will indicate. Please read for us. Okay, I'll read. Watchmen, therefore. For ye know the day, know the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is, is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And straight away took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them over five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that he had received one, <coughs> he digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. 
After a long time, the Lord of those servants come in and reconnect with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art in hard men, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strode. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast, that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strode. Thou oughtst therefore to have put my money to, exchange, to the exchangers and then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him who hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister, for reading. Um, just listening to the reading there, talking about talents. The very first thing that we get and that we must um, not is the spiritual gifts that are given to all of us. Who is the giver? It is the master who gave and went away to a faraway country, who will return and demand according to what he has given to each and every one of us. And we do see the different attitudes on the people that were given. Uh, the master gave each of them according to the abilities. And that is one other thing to note, abilities that he himself had accorded the people. And the attitudes differed, especially when we come to the one who had only one given. The master gave him one because that's the ability that was given him. And therefore the whole thing that comes around is when we look at ourselves and the gifts that God has given us for the glory of, of his name is faithfulness. Are you faithful in the little that has been given you? or to the ability that you have been given, do you live up to it faithfully? Or you despise yourself or you are grudging, looking at others, why can't I do that? Why is that one doing that and I'm not the one uh, doing it? Or at church, why is that one being chosen to that position and not me? And at the same time, end up neglecting to do that which you are able to do according to God's according and you will be called to account for that now just on the noting uh, on that one in the opening let us get into the um I'll get I'll read a quote from Christ's object lessons to fortify the verses that have been read to us and then we see what we take uh to us that is relevant to us now Christ on the Mount of Olives had spoken to his disciples of his second advent to the world. He had specified 
certain signs that were to show when his coming was near and had bidden his disciples watch and be ready. Again, he repeated the warning, watch, therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour where, wherein the Son of Man cometh. Then he showed what it means to watch for his coming. The time is to be spent not in idle waiting, but in diligent working. This lesson he taught in the parable of the talents. The kingdom of heaven, he said, is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straight away took his journey. The man traveling into a far country represents Christ, who, when speaking this parable, was soon to depart from uh, this earth to heaven. The born servants or slaves of the parable represent the followers of Christ. We are not our own. We have been bought with a prize, 1 Corinthians 6.20, not with the corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, 1 Peter 1.18-19, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again, 2 Corinthians 5, 15. Now that is the quotation I've just read on the, from the, the book. Let us see what we take that is relevant to us now to understand uh, the parable on a, a, a personal level and a present time uh, understanding for us now. Christ put the great commission in a parable. Him being the master going to a far away country and his disciples remaining as servants with each given a talent to multiply for the master. These talents are spiritual gifts and abilities given each of us to employ into use for his glory. In the parable, we then find different attitudes found amongst Christians. Whatever we do for the Lord is propagated by an attitude we have towards the whole gospel commission and the relationship we have with the master. And the relationship is influenced by the value we put on what Christ did for us. The parable reveals three groups of Christians. Each was given talents according to ability and that sets a tone uh, from start. Everyone has some ability. Number one, the men who received five talents. These are highly and multi-talented uh, people. These have a zeal for the Lord and utilize their gifts to, maxima, to maximum to the glory of the Lord. Number two, the men who received two talents. These are average gifted and they also do their best of what they are capable of to the Lord's glory. And number three, the men who received one talent. These are generally the greater part of the congregations. They feel they have nothing much to do for the Lord, especially as they compare themselves with the five and two talent men. They do not feel they have any calling to do anything for the Lord. And to a great extent, they feel the work being done by the highly talented is enough as they think the Lord is capable of reaping where he did not sow. They feel that attending church is sufficient for them to be saved. Bringing souls for the master is not necessarily, necessarily their duty. And because they do not use the little talents they have, they eventually lose them or lose their ability to do anything because of a dead zeal. Inspiration tells us that there would be no one in heaven with a starless crown. That automatically means everyone who will be saved must have a soul they win for the master. 
for Jesus to recognize them as co-workers with himself. But the third group of servants, they bury their talents in the ground or do not use them until they literally lose the ability to do any work. It is of interest to note that it is not just preaching that wins people to Christ. A noble character that reflects godliness can do more. The lacking in the third group of workers is therefore frightening because it shows that by failure to use the least of the talents they have, they also lose that which they have. They become corrupted in deportment and character. They cannot impress anyone for Christ. Hence, at the coming of the master, the buried talent is taken away from them and they are cast out. When we do not um, do anything for the cause of Christ, we lose Christian virtues and our characters lack the, the heavenly you to lure people to Christ. Therefore, no matter how um, faithful we are in attending church, Christ cannot claim us as his own. It becomes a typical righteousness without works. James 2, uh, 17 to 26, 26 reads, Even so, faith, if it, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. I will show, show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain men, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought um, with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith alone. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also is dead also. The common question people ask when you, you talk about faith devoid of works as dead is, what about the thief on the cross? And personally, I argue that the thief on the cross had works. He acted on his conviction and the belief that Jesus Christ was the Messiah who will be setting up a kingdom soon and, and so solicited him to remember him in that kingdom. He did not just keep quiet and die with his conviction unexpressed. Now, this group, despite their righteousness, which falls much lower than that of uh, the Pharisees, they come before their master empty-handed with no sheaves to earn them uh, stars for their crowns. Hence, they cannot be accepted. There is a song that asks that grand question, will there be any stars on my crown? And the prophetess saw no starless crown in heaven. We did not have the same number of stars, but everyone had at least a star says uh, inspiration. Now for the poem, that is the, the presentation on the talents. For the poem, I couldn't find any better ex ex expression of this, but the song. It's in Christ in song number 151. If you could help me sing that song, I will sing a stanza and let others also who can sing seeing the other stanzas. <clears throat> one five one, it, um, I would have loved to sing it in my vernacular. 
But anyway, I'll sing it in English. I am thinking today of that beautiful land I shall reach when the sun goes down. When through wonderful grace by my Savior I stand, will there be any stars in my crown? Will there be any stars, any stars in my crown? When at evening the sun goeth down, when I work with the blessed in the mansions of rest, will there be any stars in my crown? Next if, you can, if you can sing the second verse, I think I should be able to catch up on the third. Okay. In the strength of the Lord, let me labor and pray. Let me watch as a winner of souls. That bright stars may be mine in the glorious day. When his praise like the sea billows roll. Will there be any stars? Any stars in my crown when at evening the sun goeth down? When I wait in the place in the mountains, will there be any stars in my crown? Three, can you, can you have a go, Sister Sharon? Put the words I'm on gonna, you. Mom, oh, I'm gonna give Mom, I'm gonna give you the third verse. I've put this the I've given you the, the, the verse in the chat. Do you want to go for the third verse? Because you were actually singing and we could hear you in the background. Okay, okay let me finish it then. Yes, third oh. stanza. No, I can do it. I just thought Mum might want to sing that she started. Ah, okay, okay. Go ahead, please. I didn't Are hear you... someone trying to sing. Yeah. Okay, I'll go for it. Oh, what joy will it be when his face I behold living gems at his feet to lay down. It would sweeten my bliss in the city of gold should there be any star in my crown. Will there be any stars, any stars in my crown when there's three the sun go down? When I wake with the bless in that mansion of rest, will there be any stars in my crown? Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Sharon. I hand back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Knox. Do you know what? This song, when, when I was a child, I would go to my grandma's house, which was my mum's mum's house. I'm tearing up because it's bringing back memories. Amen. Anyway, <laughs> you used to have, we call it a gram. It would be like a cabinet with the record player. And then she would play her records. And there's certain songs that I would hear that she would play. And this would be one of the songs that it would be emanating out of the, her ground. She would never play pop songs. She used to always have her records with hymns. And this was a song, Will There Be Any Stars in My Crown? Thank you so much, Sister Knox, Amen. for the memory. And thank you, Mum, for being so willing to unmute and sing. Anyway, God is so merciful. You know, we are his children and we err in so many ways. And we look at the work and we always say, ah, oh, that person's a better singer, a better speaker, a better uh, everything else. And so you will sit back and you will fold your arms. You might even be hypercritical about what that 
person does. But God is saying whether or not he gives you five or as we would say in Jamaican, one dega dega one. <laughs> he is expecting us to be fruitful. And it's interesting, you know, today, just before I came on, on to join you, I was talking to my students about Psalms 1 and I showed them a picture of the Sahara Desert and then I showed them a picture of the Amazon rainforest and I said, God wants you to be fruitful and abundant like the Amazon rainforest. And the only way we can be that way is when we are a obedient to our, our Father in heaven, to abide in his spirit, to obedient to his covenant and his precepts, but most of all, to stay with, with, within his will. But if we do not spend time with him, if we are not fruitful, if we're not prosperous, we are just like the husk, the char, that the wind drives away. We bear nothing. And we do not add to our life and we don't add to others. And that is why when you said there will be no starless crown, each one of us will look at each other's crowns and some will be bedecked and we will not even, it will not touch us because we know that we have all been saved by the grace of God and not of ourselves that any man can boast. So no one can boast about their talents or the stars that are in their crown. It is by mercy of God why we are there. And so the little that we can do, the little, and you might say it's not sufficient, as long as you glorify God in the little corner that you are, God will be bountiful. The, the dying thief on the cross was able to profess with his mouth that Jesus Christ was Lord. And you know what? There was someone in that, that midst that was turned back to God where they might have walked away. So we mm -hmm. cannot, we cannot denigrate anything that God has gifted us with and we should be prosperous just as he desires us to be. So thank you so much, Sister Knox. For that lesson, I'm going to repeat this lesson in a in a kiddie form next week, just to keep reminding my own students and myself: is we need to go to heaven with stars, and it means that we have to work the work of Him who sends us, whilst it is day. Otherwise, we will find that ourselves being on the back foot, being like, "Depart from me, I know you not." because all the resources and gifts from the monetary gifts to the smile on your face, it is a talent that God has given us. I don't know, I've, I've been very preachy, but I was just very moved by today's message. I don't know if anyone has a comment to make on the message today, or if they were, or if it brought back into memory what they should be doing, <laughs> but yes. Uh, many a times I think of this song. I even sing it before I do my evening worship. And I thinking of myself, if I have any stars in my crown. And I think, and I said, at least my children, if they are faithful, they would be the star in my crown because I bring them in the faith of Christ Jesus. And that song, when I sing it, I cry because I say, is there any stars in my crown, Lord? Amen. Amen, mommy. Amen. 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 And it, it should be a question. And I praise God for the breath of life and the cognitive understanding that I do have that opportunity to ask that question. 
but also that the spirit has triggered that question in all of us to say to us, what are we doing with what we've got? The gift of life is a talent. There are many who are laid up in hospital bed in, in ICU who cannot say a word. And, you know, their probation is getting ready to close. But we have the cognitive uh, ability to respond to this message and say, God, what what should I do for you? What, you know, every day get up and say, what do you have me to do, dear Lord? And give him a time to respond so that we know that at the end of all, there will be stars in our crown, not because we worked it because we wanted a pretty crown, but we God has laid a soul upon our heart and we have done his bidding, whether or not through preaching or smiling or offering a, a word of encouragement. We cannot be mute and we should not allow lockdown and the remnant of lockdown to stifle our mission for God. Sister Mugabe, I know you've gone muted. I want, allow me to sing this song. When I closed my eyes, when I was in Zimbabwe, yeah, in the street with the books, walking, witnessing. Let me sing this song. Dijawa nenyere Mumane ruzuwa Ovira Ovira Dumuka Dapone Skotuwe Kumusha Dijawa nenyere Zie Amen 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 Nox, you can explain what I was singing. Yes, it's the please. same song. It's the same song, except that it's in a, 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 another version of um, tune, but it's, it's it's still the same song. Amen. With any stars on my crown. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I, you know, sometimes we need to be very deliberate and sit down with our Bibles and a pen and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? What gifts have you given to me that I have left dormant because I feel that I'm inadequate? God qualifies every person <laughs> and, and every person needs to be attentive to their mission statement. There's a mission statement and it's a basic one. We are all meant to be about our father's business and if we are not let's pray about it and let god lead us in his path of righteousness at this time sister knox we're not going to go into our normal prayers of different things what we're going to do now we're going to go for prayers of forgiveness and prayers of consecration it is we're in an, a new year the year is still brand new. There's so much work to be done. We can look at the vineyard and we can always look at it and think like, ah, oh, I don't even know where to start. I'm just not that person. But we need Holy Ghost boldness. We need to be consecrated. That means sanctified to do the purpose. But we also have to ask for forgiveness and for infilling of the spirit. So I'm going to ask Sister Knox if you can lead us in prayer. And as the spirit moves you, let us pray not only for ourselves, for our families, for our church community, for the Seventh-day Adventist church in its, in its entirety, but also for our brethren who are not within the, the household of faith and for, for, our, church, for our world because so many people are going to Christless graves and God is holding us accountable for those people who we have a circle of influence that we have not influenced to be making them aware of God's existence. So Sister Knox, if you can lead us and then we will pray um, on that theme. Thank you. Okay, let us pray. Eternal God, our Father is in heaven. We come before the throne of grace this afternoon. We want to thank you 
for your mighty works in our lives. To be alive on each day is a gift that you have given to us that we must accept with a zeal to glorify you. First of all, we come to worship you, to exalt your name and to praise you for who you are. Calling upon your names, O oh Father, that show and reveal who you are. Jehovah Nisi, him who heals our diseases. Jehovah Shalom, who gives our peace. Jehovah El Elyon, the most high God. Yahweh, the self-existent one. The one who is creative, who created the world and everything that is in it, that we see and that which we cannot see. It is all your power, O oh Father, that reveals who you are. And as your servants, as your children, we come at the feet of the cross to lay bare our lives and give ourselves as instruments for your glory. That you take us today and show us what we can do in these closing scenes of the earth's history. Each and every one of us, you put us on, the, on, our, on our allotments and on our corners where you have designated us to work. We pray for an inspiration that is new each day, that we may hear your voice clearly, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, that we may diligently do that which you have put us to do for the souls that are perishing, that someone, Father, may hear, and by your grace, hearken, but should people hear and not Hearken, let our voices of Father serve as witness that God did send his servants to warn the world. But above all, we pray that let our own souls be warned enough that we will not be ladders that will be used by others to climb unto heaven while we remain down here. Save us, O oh Father, individually as well as our, as our families. We pray that you send out your spirit to revive a primitive godliness in our homes, that we may seek you with all fiber of our souls, to desire heaven and to desire holiness, that you may imbue us with your spirit, O oh Father. I present all the people that are in this platform today as we bow our heads before you, O oh Father, look into our hearts and see the need. Provide, O oh Father, and let it manifest to the glory of your name. We pray for our families that are behind us, that we stand in the gate for. We pray for the church at large. Father, we are at a, a perilous time where we see and hear daily the intensity of the enemy fighting against the truth. This church, O oh Father, which you called with a special mission upon the world, has never been put on the spotlight of criticism like it's happening now. It is obvious, O oh Father, the spirit of the enemy is getting agitated. Give us the strength, O oh Father, and give us the understanding. Help us to seek daily in your word the wisdom that we may stand by at this time. And as you give unto each and every one of us, help us, O oh Father, to spare not but to be the watchmen who are on the wall of Zion, who will sound the warning to the world, sound the trumpet with a certain sound that will be clear and distinct for those who want to hear to hear. We pray, O oh Father, we will not pray for all the other needs that we have in our homes, for you know the needs of all these things. We know where we are sick, we need a healing. And when we walk according to your will, O oh Father, you will preserve us, you will keep us. But we desire now that you show us that which you will have us do for this time. For Jesus to be lifted higher above the world. That all that are seeking may see him. That they may be saved. But above all, O oh Father... 
confirm our names and our, our families into the book of life. We want to thank you this afternoon for everything that you have done for us, for the revival you give us and your spirit whom you give to be in our midst when we speak your word. May the glory be given to your name. Blessed be the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who died on the cross of Calvary. And may we daily be baptized in the, in the, in the power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's but pray. Could... Go ahead, sis. Our precious eternal Father, in the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit pleading for us, thank you to make it possible. This midday prayer being bless Sister Knox, enlarge your territory and your family. Lord, in Adventist, we have a theme, I will go. I want to pray for every Adventist person, O oh Lord, whether out of church and still there, may your Holy Spirit, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, tell us to go in there, give us power. To go ye therefore, so that an end will come, O oh Lord, when we go with this word. Thank you, we need these crowns, O oh Lord. And we thank God there will be no jealousy in heaven. Because if there was jealousy in heaven, those who are waking, they are going to have these crowns. Thank you, give us power, divine power to go ye therefore. Remember our families, remember the sick in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Um, we're going to read Joel 2, verses 28 and 29. And it says, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. Let us pray. Most gracious Father in heaven, sovereign Lord of our lives, we thank you, O oh God, for the mercies that you extend to us. New every morning, O oh God, great is your faithfulness to us. We want to thank you, Lord, because you are the author of our lives and you still have the pages of our lives open because we have life. And we ask you, O oh God, as you take that pen today, we yield that sovereignty and we ask you, O oh God, to rewrite, redeem the things in our lives so that we will do the work of him who sent us whilst it is day. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts and the talents that you have given to us. Some of them, dear Lord, we haven't even dusted them off from the box that you have given to you, given to us. We've buried them thinking that we were unequipped and unable from whatever human narrative we have placed before the authority of God. Please forgive us. We pray, oh God, the special gift of your son. We thank you. We thank you for the gift of your spirit, which is the, the comforter of our soul and the teacher and the reprover and the sealer of our lives. We pray, oh Lord, all of these gifts, Help us to use wisely. We pray, O oh God, that as we align ourselves with your will, that we will strive to use each of the talents and gifts that you have given wisely to benefit the cause of the Lord Most High. Guide us in the fulfillment of your plans in our lives today. Give us grace to be humble, because when we are gifted things, sometimes we get so arrogant that so we ask for self to die so that Jesus Christ reigns supremely 
in our lives. And so we ask for that grace to be humble, the grace to be respectful, and the grace to be like Paul, to be everything to your people in these last days so that we can win a soul for your kingdom. We're not doing it for the accolades, but just to know that the same grace that saved us is the same power that is extended to each person that we come in contact with. I pray, dear Lord, that you will help us to be industrious, that we will work and that we will not be scared and we will not be worried because you are going to be the source of our strength and the strength of our life. We ask you, Lord, through prayer and through supplication and through the working of the Spirit that you will extend our territories. So whether we're in our workplace, in our homes, on the streets, that we will use the gifts that you have given us in these places to fulfill the purpose of the Most High. But most of all, Lord, may the sovereign peace that comes from your throne be ours. So as we implement your purpose in, in our lives, that the people around us will experience peace that comes from your throne. Because in a world of chaos and choices, you offer us peace. And may we be those executors bringing those people so that they can know you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity as your people to be here in prayer. And we ask you, O oh God, that you will just blot out all of our iniquities and just give us a new heart and a new mindset so that we can do your will today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I don't know if there are any prayer requests, but what, what I'm going to do is ask Sister Knox to give our final benediction. So I'm just going to stop the recording so that the prayer requests can be then dealt with accordingly. <laughs> 